Americans. Welcome to Update Fridays. This is CJ Holmes, founder of Homeowners for Justice and your host for today. And boy, do we have a packed schedule. Uh, sorry, I started just a minute or two late because I'm trying to collect pictures and get them into the presentations. Turns out we can't Skype right now because I've upgraded the um, quality of the live streaming and I have to upgrade my internet um, bandwidth before we can do Skype. So that's fine. We've got these great pictures from everybody and we're hearing from all over the country. So thank you for joining us and very quickly, here's again how to contact me. And I wanted to just show you what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to talk about the latest and greatest in the news. Elizabeth Warren's been busy and that is really good news. And uh, the DOJ and the SEC are filing charges and what about these loan mod letters? I've got something I wanna put out to the group here and I appreciate your feedback. This is, this is something that maybe we can work together to do a third step to help homeowners postpone auctions while we can actually get lawsuits working in the courts for the people. And then today we're gonna to hear from just all over the place. And so um, uh, without ado, I wanna get started real quickly. Uh, the first thing I wanted to mention, just quick announcement, is that I've heard now twice and I'm gonna share the Bloomberg Terminal functions, it, Bloomberg's cut back some of those functions, and this is for the auditors. And the upshot is, um, if they can't find the screen through the Bloomberg terminal, my understanding is that good auditors can find that information anyway. So it will make more of a difference if you're ever looking for a securitization audit to work with people that really know what they're doing and uh, demand information, demand uh, resumes, uh, what they, how many they've done, what they do before you just go hire anybody willy-nilly off the street. And in fact, um, it's not a bad idea to just ask me and I can forward you to the, the people that really do quality work. Fortunately, we've been blessed by knowing uh, who these are. And another quick thing that I wanted to do on Update Friday, we talked about how can we get the word out because there's quite a few following, um, you know, whatever the number is, the fact is we need to multiply that by 10, by 100, by 1,000, because then, then we'll have some clout. So the things that have come to, uh, my way so far this week from listeners and contacts is, how do I share the live stream? So I'm recommending that you either forward the email blast you get, there's a way, just forward it to everybody in your um, address book. Just say you like the live streams, whatever you want to say. Or you can actually go to a specific um, show. And if you go down, there's the video and then there'll be some comment sections. And right below that, there's a in light gray, it says share. You could share that. And once you click the share button, up comes a link. You can just email that link. Or it says embed. So if you have a website, you can embed a show. Please feel free to share it this way with people they will be glad you did. Um, uh, blasting out for your own email list. Mailing postcards. I've got several people now saying, okay, I'll step up. I'll put a hundred bucks into it. Where do I mail them? Send me the addresses and what I do. What should I send? And so uh, I've drafted with uh, some groups already. We've drafted sort of a, a postcard, some a letter. I'm going to draft my own. I'm gonna draft a letter to the editor and put those on the website. I'll try to do that this weekend. Uh, probably called Reaching Out, something like that, on a new web page, so that anybody in the country can just go here. It's already d done. Just link it, just download it, just send it, just get it out to supervisors, recorders, DAs, the, the people facing foreclosure, your friends, everybody on the planet, because this affects every one of us, as you guys well know. Um, please. If you know, and I'm getting a lot of um, suggestions, and I apologize because I'm pretty much doing this all by myself. Gail is such a fabulous help in calling and setting things up, but you know we're still busy trying to do our own business. So if you have suggested guests for shows, co contact them, and please have them contact me. Tell me who they are, we'll do our best to, to connect, and then we can get them on the schedule so that we can really bring a, a full boat of information from all over the country of people that really care about others, fight the battle, and really know what they're talking about. 
and then please help connect us with officials. And I'm thinking like Alan Grayson. I'm thinking like the senators. The A lot of people will say to me, well, you should do this, you should do that. And the fact is I'm sort of loaded up. So whatever help you can be in connecting this movement with the powers that be, like Elizabeth Warren. People say, well, contact Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> and I said, okay, I've already sent out emails in the past and they just go nowhere. Uh, we need a connection. So if you know somebody that knows Elizabeth or you know knows somebody that knows somebody that knows, we, we need to have that, um, you know, just a few steps away from the separation. We need that friendly connection. So please help on that. All right. So today, very quickly, I want to cover some headlines in the news, and I want to bring this to your attention because I have now gotten this in my email about four times, just this last week. It's making the rounds and it's fine, except people will say, we won, it's great, it's over, we've, you know, we've got something. And the fact is I want to point out that on this, it's February 16, 2011. And the trouble with this is, this is bankruptcy court. And BK court all over the country has no jurisdiction over state courts or federal courts. So this is a win, yes, in New York BK court, but not anywhere else. This is not gonna change it. In fact, if you go to my legal action by state, you'll see that about 13 states have rulings like this, that either the model is illegal, they have no standing, they are not a beneficiary, you know, if you will, take your pick of what the ruling is, but that is not stopping foreclosures. That's the the dichotomy. We get a few favorable rulings. We get a ton of unfavorable rulings. For every one good one, we probably get a thousand bad ones, and that's the battle. So I wanted to bring to your attention that this is good news, sorta. It, it, it's good for what it is, but it's not the hope and solution that we've been hoping for just to bring that uh, to clarity. Some of the links that people have sent now are really fascinating. Here's one for Bank of America return to the scene of the crime. And again, I'm gonna link all of these into the um, comment section underneath the uh, video on the live stream once we're done. And this just basically talks about all the fines that B of A has paid. You can look down, you know, okay, 25 billion here and 8 billion there and there's 400 million there. And, and the fact is, what good is that? It's not doing any good whatsoever, not to the people and not to stopping the crime. So that's one of the real dilemmas that we face, as you guys well know. Please get the word out because it, it's going to take political change. It's going to be the winds of change when the people actually start saying, come on, you are my elected official and I expect you to do something. And I expect you to do it for me and to stop these banksters. That's when we're going to get the change we need. So Elizabeth Warren demands mortgage settlement documents from regulators. And I am just to totally delighted that we have regulators that do care. They're, they are seemingly few and far between. We need to connect with these people. That's why I'm asking for all the help anybody can bring. Connect us, connect our group. We're, we're pretty dedicated. You're following me on live stream. I'm streaming every day. Let's get connected with these kinds of people and she's demanding documents. Let's help her demand these documents. And that's related to just this settlement they did this month, you know, the um, eight and a half billion, which they, at the end of the article, it says something like, um, I wonder how that relates to the, you know, the real damage that they've done. If it was eight and a half trillion, that would relate to the damage that they did. That's my opinion. And, and I'm sure you guys support it. Here's another article. Uh, they're calling for more transparency on the failed foreclosure reviews. You know, good luck with that. And we need to help them. They're calling for bank regulators to disclose more details on that settlement that they reached. And here again, we've got the banks reaching a settlement with the regulators with no documentation and they just agree and no voice of the people. So we're the voice of the people. Come on, we need to make it, we need to really start screaming and, and be heard. That's the key, we need to be heard. 
Here I wanted to show you that the DOJ and the SEC are charging former Jeffries executive with defrauding mortgage-backed security investors. It's a duh. Of course they have, and of course they all have. And of course this is not the big names that we would like to see charged. Here's hoping that we can water this seed that's being planted so that the tree will grow and they will go after these bigger names. And basically, they're defrauding because they bought it from one and sold it to another, lied about the price. Duh. They're doing this all over the place, and you and I both know that. I just want to make these articles and bring this update to your attention. And so, uh, what the, I'd like to talk later, but I want to just bring this to attention. We have so many guests today sharing with us that I don't want to really go into it in detail, but this is a key point. This is written by Mandelman, Martin Andelman on Mandelman Matters, and it's a fascinating read, and he's basically discussing, and that's why I have down here, I want to just read this out loud so you can see it for yourself. It says, um, where are we again? Uh, there we go. Uh, just a sec. Uh, he's basically saying that the Homeowner Bill of Rights, and this is the um, SB 900. Here it is. A major deterrent to us, and us would be the mortgage backs, uh, the servicers, and the foreclosure trustees, and the and the master servicers, all of them, jointly and severally would be liable under the bill. That the purposely designed SB 900 to help the borrower never lose the home. The new bill gives every borrower the legal right to request a modification at any time prior to the trustee's sale being conducted, thus stopping the foreclosure sale and then repeating that process so the sale can never be held. So here's what, I'm want, what I want to talk to you guys about. Let's give this some thought. Let's give this some research. We've got some fabulously dedicated researchers you know, in, this, in our team right here. Let's figure out how we can maximize this for every homeowner so that we could basically, I sort of have in mind, you know, on our postcards, on our blasts, on our articles to the letters of the editor, on those kinds of things, the let's, you know, let's list the things that the owners could do to help postpone the auctions. We can't, of course, ever guarantee anything since we're dealing with, dealing with lying, lying cheaters and thieves, but the OCC complaint, the notary complaints of the notariz notarizations on the foreclosure documents, and this letter, this, this, this opportunity to continually demand and re-demand and re-demand and re-demand a loan modification. If that's really true, come on guys, help me draft a letter, a boilerplate letter that people could actually just use, you know, fill in the blank, and I can set all that stuff up. I'll be happy to do that. So I want to just plant that seed in these uh, thoughtful people and really smart people that we have on, the, on in our team right now, in our corner, in the corner of the owners. Okay, so I wanted to also bring to your attention uh, banks are, re this is on Neil Garfield's um, um, blog, and people have said Neil needs to be on your show, and I've asked him, but I haven't heard back. So if you know Neil, <laughs> have him contact me. Let's get him on the show. Um, anyway, banks are restarting private label securitizations. Well, of course they are. They are going to securitize the planet 70 freaking million times. That's the point. They make so much money securitizing and they care nothing about anybody else. And in every case, they're going to ruin the people, their livelihood, and the money supply. So we need to stop that process. So what I'd like to do is invite our first guest on board. Um, Philip, is that you? In every case, they're going to ruin Hello. Philip, is that you? Yes, sir. Sure, oh, okay. Can you put the live stream on uh, pause? You're on the air. Okay. <laughs> That's by the way, just for everybody else, when when it's your turn to share, if you're watching live stream, just put it on pause. Otherwise, we get this feedback. So, welcome to the show, Philip. What do you have to share with us today? Uh, are Are you with me? 
Yes, I'm here. I'm here. So th thank you for sh uh, sharing with us today. I know that you are the co-founder and board member of Go Local Cooperative. And I had planned to have you, we tried, we tried really hard to have him on the show earlier this week and then Skype sort of blew up live stream and stuff like that. So why don't you share with us again what Go Local is about and how that works. And then I've got the website. I can bring it up while you talk. Okay, great. Thanks so much for having me on the show, CJ. And you're doing such wonderful work. Um, what I would want to, the, the context that I would want to see this in is, well, I want to start with the, the uh, foreclosure business that you're dealing with, which is, you know, a huge topic in its own right, and, and you're doing wonderful work to try and get things regulated more, more honestly and, and more completely, but uh, that and so many other of the, of the good projects that people are working on, trying to deal with the problems, the huge problems that we face environmentally and socially and economically and so forth, they um, basically are dealing with symptoms and not with, with root causes. And that's what Go Local, one of the main things that the Go Local Cooperative is trying to get people moving towards is looking at root causes of destructive and uh, deceitful behavior, which we see around us all over the place. And just to cut right to the chase here, I will let you and, and your listeners know that um, from my research that started over 20 years ago when I was a professor at Sonoma State University, um, I have determined that the single most effective or most powerful root cause of this kind of deceitful, destructive behavior is material scarcity, money scarcity in particular. And what we're dealing with right now in the crash that started in 2008 is a situation where people and their governments don't have enough money to do the things that we need to do as a society. And, and personally, and as businesses, the money's not there, the banks aren't lending it, there's all kinds of um, reasons for bank behavior you know, and, and the bailout and all of that stuff. But the, the, the place where most people don't go when they're talking about you know, what best practices we can, we can adopt in order to deal with all these problems is they don't go to the nature of the money itself, how it is issued, how it functions, what the, the implications of that genesis of money and, and the functionality of money are. And that's what I want to talk about really quickly, because as it turns out, when we're talking about looking for best practices to imitate, emulate, and in order to solve our problems, uh, nobody looks at the fact that money, the way it's currently structured, is itself not a best practice. We need money to do all of the other good things that we want to do, but there isn't enough of it available to us. And so the question is, what is it that drives that unavailability of money? And the answer is, that it is the fact that money in our society, as in every other uh, nation on the, on the planet, is issued by banks as loans. In other words, right. as debt. And that right. debt bears interest. But they don't create the money to pay the interest with, which means that we, if we are, say we're a business and we've taken out a multi-hundred thousand dollar loan in order to capitalize improvements in our business or something like that, we have to pay that loan back um, and we have to pay it with interest. But since the money to pay the interest with is itself nowhere available, we have to take it from somebody else's loan principal because all the money that's out there circulating is lent money. We don't own it. We're only renting it. And the rent that we pay on it is the interest on the loans. So I that's, know this that's... is a, a lot for people to get their heads around uh, in one fell swoop. But um, there are wonderful books available to uh, read if you want to inform yourself more about exactly how the system works. And my favorites are uh, uh, some links that I supplied you with, uh, CJ. Um, the, well, the, the most I immediate one that just recently came out, and I translated this book from German. I used to be a German professor. Um, is called Occupy Money. It's a short book by the uh, German complementary economist named Margaret Kennedy. And it's from um, New Society Publishers, and you can go to your local bookstore and have them order it, and it'll cost you about 13 bucks or something like that. Um, so that, what, what Margaret does is she gets right to the root of the problem with compound interest. Right, um, right. She explains yeah. that more yeah. clearly and more immediately and, and uh, attractively than any other source that I've read so far. And I did, and I did a show, you know, that we tried to get you on on Tuesday, I believe, about 
basically Wednesday, Wednesday, the Federal Reserve, and there's a, a quick little video that's just so hits right to the point, and that is basically the con game that the Federal Reserve has been doing. It's a private organization, and they create credit for private profit. They get to create this money out of nothing, thin air, and we all have to work to pay it back. And every Federal Reserve note, which is in your wallets, that is generated has to be paid back with interest. And so there is no way out of the debt hole. It eventually turns us into debtors. I mean, we're just a debt. The whole planet is in debt to the central banks. They get right. all the benefit. And so tell us real quickly about Go Local, and then we're going to have to have you on the show next week. Um, here, I'll show well, what, you what Go Local again. Local has, what Go Local has developed in order to try and uh, uh, solve this problem, you know, because we're really looking for solutions, not just for right. arranging the deck chairs on the Titanic or, or you know, lamenting over our victimhood or something. We want to solve the problem. All right, so there is a better way to do money. And we're not talking about revolutionizing things and doing away with uh, fractional reserve banking and the Fed and so forth, although that might not be a bad idea. Uh, and we're, we're not specifically talking about platinum coins, but anyway, right. what, what uh, Go Local has done, which uh, could be emulated by any localization organization uh, in the country or around the world, is to develop a system of self-generated credit, right. whereby the people who are participating in the system, and it's a network of businesses right now, we've got, um, as Go Local members, we've currently got about 300 members lined up, and many of them are using this self-generated credit system. And, and these members would be businesses? Yes, yeah. Okay, so you become a rewards card merchant, I'm showing your website, and have the rewards card. And so basically, um, businesses end up transferring credit back and forth basically for goods and services they're at the moment they're not we're not quite to that stage that's okay. the second stage what they are doing now is issuing this self-generated credit to customers as rebates as a percentage of the purchase price that a customer has paid for whatever they're buying from that merchant okay just the first stage and and uh, it, it, to find out more about that reward um uh, rebate uh, uh, mechanism. Um, listeners, viewers should go to the Go Local website and just drill down a little bit under Rewards Card. It's one of the one of the tabs on the uh, the um, home page. Right. And drill down and to um, how the Rewards Card actually works. There's some good videos there that you yep. can watch. Yep. I'm showing that. The, the point that the main point is that what what we have initiated here is the generation of our own internal credit that does not rely on right. loans from banks and it does not bear interest. And it can't be fractionalized or diluted, right? That's right. Yeah. And it can't leak out of our system. Right. Unlike unlike uh, discounts that uh, businesses like to give to people in order to incentivize them to come and buy their stuff at that business, the, right. that discount, you know, that money that is essentially given then to the customer can easily be spent then at Walmart or Costco or wherever, and it immediately goes out of the system. Whereby, uh, whereas, I meant to say, if the um, merchant incentivizes their customers to uh, uh, shop with them with Go Local Bucks, that's what this self-generated credit is called, Go Local Bucks. Those Go Local Bucks will uh, will circulate forever in our system. Exactly, right. and and like we said before. And thank you so much for bringing us up to date again on this. And we we continue to want to bring you back on the show to keep us up to date because this is how the people can wean themselves off of the the dollars, off of the fiat credit, Fed Reserve notes. Uh, this is just a really clever little idea, and I'm really pleased that you're you're focused on this. And and is it just in Sonoma County? You have like. 30 seconds to finish up. Uh, is, how is this spread into other counties, states? What's going on with the, the movement? Well, we would love to see other localization um, organizations uh, emulate what we're doing here. Uh, and the best way is just to spread the word and have them check out our website and uh, see if they can pull something like this together. And we're happy to consult with them about it. Uh, we have uh, developed a software package, by the way, that makes this whole reward mechanism work. Um, 
and we're happy to share it with people. Oh, that's fabulous. And and just my little input here, make sure you've got a phone app for it. Is there an app for that? <laughs> and then it'll go viral. <laughs> there is. Yes, there is. And you can get that via the, the website, too. You can, you can oh, that's turn your, perfect. your smartphone into a Go Local uh, search engine. All right, guys, uh, all of you watching, this is this is one of what I would call a baby step solution. To, to It's all about the money. The foreclosure crisis and the economic crisis are just horrible symptoms, but we need to shift the money. That is one of our really long-term goals, and this is a baby step forward. Thanks again for sharing, Philip. We'll hear from you later. Thank you so much, CJ. Talk Thanks. To you soon. Bye. Okay, bye. Hey, Renee, is this you? Hello? Yes, it is. Hey, thank you for joining us. So, you have been doing some heavy research this week, right? Oh, my gosh. Heavy, <laughs> is, heavy is definitely the word for it. To bring us up to date. What's so, going on? Okay, well, as all of you uh, know, my last time I was on the show, it was about documents and how to get them out of county record. Um, we then had Randy on with Notary, and he and I have uh, done a lot of research together. We've been working... Um, night and day pretty much around the clock with clients and not clients because I don't have clients he does but yeah I've had calls from across the nation this week since that show and yes. since I posted for people to get in touch with me um, who have countrywide or Bank of New York Mellon on their documents and what has happened is it's blown up um, we've connected all of these people and as suspected, um, what is happening is we still have the dual tracking going on. We still have the live coming from the servicers. We all know that. Not a big surprise. But the problem is it must be a surprise to all our legislators because every time they get contacted, they're acting very surprised. Oh, they shouldn't be doing this. Right. Well, we have now got a pattern, and I'm asking everybody listening to do this. Get your documents out, get your papers out, get your letters from your servicers. Bank of America is notorious for this and still uh, destroying people emotionally on the phone. I, I've had three yesterday alone, this exact thing, and this is not um, two. Yeah. What we're asking you to do and what I'd like you to do, get those letters out. And anywhere Bank of America or anyone else tells you that the trustee is the owner you get on the horn to that trustee and you call the trustee and you let them know that you have a letter in your hand and you be prepared by attachment to send it to them because they're going to have you email and they are saying oh uh, no we're owner is trustee now mind you called previously in months prior were met with no we are not the owner now they are turning tail and saying owner as trustee. So what I did was I got Doc on Malcolm, as a friend of ours, uh, back east on the horn with me, and we started investigating PSAs. When we started pumping in owner, you know, control F owner, control F trustee, control F owner as trustee, control F beneficiary ownership, there is not anything in this country that's called owner trustee as far as securitized mortgages go. I called Moody's um, Investment Corp, and I got a nice young investor and representative on the phone, and I said, son, I got a question for you. I'm an investor in this, in this United States, and we have such concerns over anything being clouded, and we have Bank of New York Mellon, Mellon trying to tell us that they're owner as trustee, and I shut up, and he said, as what? And I said, owner as trustee, have you ever heard of that? And I said, because I'm telling you what, in all my years, I've never heard those terms used together in mortgage security. And he said he hadn't either. So what I'm making a point here of is this is important and documentation is important. They are, the servicers are still saying the trustees own these and only the trustees can be the ones to answer to modifications. The trustees tell you they have no authority to do this because they don't for the PSAs. 
So then you're sent back to the servicer whose representative is still doing this circle of, of hell. Yes. So, um, so that has been, what I'm finding is we have documentation and we're documenting uh, even more. My conversation um, with the Kentucky uh, Attorney General's office, um, they called me, uh, oh gosh, I don't know what day it was, CJ, I'm kind of lost now as to time, I don't even know what day we're on. Um, but they were very clear that this is, this is part of the problem and this is what they are looking to include in their suit. So I'm looking to gather a lot of this information to forward to them as well. Um, because we can say it, but when they see it and they see the darn proof of these communications in writing, uh, that's what they need. And, and Renee, um, I've been listening to you and I'm just wanting to clarify. I've now got up on the screen a corporate assignment of deed of trust and it assigns and transfer. This is the one um, I think Randy used, um, you know, with uh, Clava Datcher and, and Seacrest. Oh, that's mine. Yeah. And, and it says corporate, corporation assignment of deed of trust for value received. The undersigned hereby grants, assigns, and transfers to, and then it's Bank of New York Mellon, formerly known as Bank of New York, as trustee for the certificate holders, blah, 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 blah. All beneficial interest under that certain deed of trust. And that's what you're talking about, right? Is that what you're talking about? That, and you'll get letters from the attorneys that are representing these. When you send your QWRs in, you'll yes. get a letter back. And it very clearly states in those letters that the owner of your mortgage is Bank of New York Mellon as trustee for. Now, they are not owner. And the only ones, as we know, that are starting, we're starting to be told and being used in court, is the owner has to be the one to bring forth the foreclosure. Well, now, and that ties in with, um, you know, the SB 900, which basically requires exactly. that, the, that the owner of the note, that whoever is foreclosing, has standing to foreclose. And... Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of letters and lawsuits. I mean, I've already seen one attorney letter going out about that saying, prove you have standing. And yeah, because they don't. Because and this they is don't. what I'm proving in this research. When you get out the PSAs and really read them and dissect them, the only thing owned in those trusts are certificates. Certificates <laughs> are not mortgages. <laughs> And, and James is going to be on here in just a minute, and he's going to tell us, I'm right. sure, that the certificates represent that payment stream. Right, but the problem is, is also in the PSAs, they have a responsibility to maintain tangible certificates in a depository. Tell me where those tangible certificates are. <laughs> are not, they not keep them. Ha, can they, do they? Create them. Oh, 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 you...